Hey everybody, it's me, Alex, and today we're comparing the Mac M1 to the Intel Mac. Alex, what are you doing? Uh, I'm making a video. Don't you think you've done enough videos comparing the M1 to Intel? I guess. I mean, these folks seem to like the comparisons. Plus, there's so many frameworks and tech stacks and languages to test. Why? Do you think there's something else I should be doing? Yes, Alex. Have you done any AMD tests yet? AMD? Like Ryzen? No, not yet. What are you waiting for? Do it. Okay. Are you... No. I'm just a deep voice in the corner. Not creepy at all. Now go forth, my child, and make the AMD videos. Okay, deep voice. Hey, uh, can I call you DV for short? No. You might have seen some of my videos here before testing different languages and tech stacks on Apple Silicon and comparing it to the Intel based machines. Well, due to popular demand, I'm also going to do some tests on AMD Ryzen chips too. And we'll start things off using this new Lenovo ThinkBook 14 G2 with a Ryzen 7 processor. You'll see the details in the description. Now I'm gonna start this off with a few assumptions. I'm going to assume that the M1 is going to build JavaScript faster. I might be wrong, but that's where I'll start. And by the way, I'm fully aware that the Dell XPS that I tested with the Intel i7 did beat the M1 in my JavaScript benchmark tests previously. Check out that video if you haven't seen it. And if you're curious, because of this assumption, I'm going to run a virtual machine on a MacBook M1 and build JavaScript script in there to cripple it a little bit. On the Lenovo ThinkBook with Ryzen 7, I'm going to build a JavaScript project without a VM at all. This is going to be interesting. Let's do it. All right, so I've set up the Lenovo ThinkBook with the Ryzen 7 machine here, and I've opened up PowerShell in the code directory. And here I've popped open Parallels, which is going to run the Ubuntu instance. Now this is an ARM64 version of Ubuntu, so it's built for the ARM chip, and Parallels now supports ARM as well. So on the M1, I'm going to run it inside a virtual machine. Here I'm going to run it just with without a virtual machine, we're gonna get the latest Angular CLI and create a brand new Angular project. Why Angular, you might say? Well, it's a pretty popular UI framework for building web front ends, and I really like it. However, it does have the longest build time out of all the modern JS frameworks that I've seen. So because of that, I chose Angular for this particular test to see how quickly it's going to build. All right, so here we go. First, I need to get the Angular CLI installed. That's gonna be npm install dash G at Angular slash CLI. I'm gonna do the same thing over here, even though I already have the Angular CLI installed. Angular 12 just came out, so I'm going to update it. That way we're on the same version. Okay, Angular CLI 12 is installed, and we can check that by typing ng-version-v. Oh, running scripts is disabled on the system, ng.ps1. So this is a security issue that prevents me from doing this on Windows PowerShell, and in order to be able to execute the CLI scripts, the Node CLI scripts, we need to set the execution policy. This is something you typically have to do when you start out with PowerShell. Sometimes I forget to do it when I set up a new machine. So set execution policy dash execution policy remote signed and scope current user. Do you want to change the execution policy? And I want to say yes to all. Okay, let's see if my ng-v flag will work. And now the Angular CLI works. Still, I'm trying to get the version here and maybe this one will work after all. Yes, okay, ng-version and now it's showing Angular CLI 12 on node 14. Let's check the Angular version here on the Ubuntu box running inside the virtual machine. ng-version, Angular CLI 12. All right, we're good to go here. I'm going to clear this and let's create a brand new Angular project, ng new my app one and i'm going to do the same thing here ng new my app one let's press enter at the same time to see who finishes first this is not going to be super accurate because there's going to be an interactive script here that asks me for options and there's going to be a download step as well to get the latest packages installed but it's just fun anyway would you like to add angular routing yes i would please thank you very much 
enter. Do I want to use a CSS preprocessor? And I'd like to use SAS, please. Here we go. Installing packages. Now, these seem to be pretty much on par as far as speed right now for the installation. And yes, I realize they're using the same network right now. So this is not the test we're going after today. But, you know, we'll see who finishes first anyway. Looks like the MacBook M1 finished first. Okay, interesting. So we've created the project. There it is. I'm going to go into that directory and... We're going to run it just in a bit. ng serve, this command right here, will build a project and server on a port. But if you give it the dash dash open command, it'll also pop up a browser with the running application. So I'm going to do that. ng serve dash dash open. And here is where I'd like to pay attention to the time. Okay, we're ready on both of these machines. Let's press enter at the same time. And we're going to put a timer on the screen to see how long each one of these takes and go. Okay, this one's generating the bundles, compiling. The M1 is this one one the Lenovo is catching up okay wow wow <laughs> that's amazing that application is already up on the M1 inside a virtual machine here it's still thinking okay here we go is that a fluke I mean I have built angular applications other ones on that virtual machine before maybe maybe it's somehow used to building angular projects should we try this again? Let's try this again okay I'm gonna terminate this what happened to my PowerShell I'm not sure, but it closed. So I'm gonna open up PowerShell one more time. Let's go into the code directory and my app. Now, it's already been built. So now at this point, if I do run the same exact command, it's going to use the pre-built assets, supposedly just see that there's no changes and start up the browser. So we're gonna take it from here and then I'll do another test where I completely rebuild a new application again, just to see if we got a fluke or not. So I'm gonna close this one here as well, clear this and let's run this one more time. ng serve dash dash open, ready, let's go. Okay, so on the Windows machine, it says port 4200 is already in use. Would you like to use a different port? I guess I might have to terminate the port first somehow. It got stuck in there. Let's, uh, let's come back here. No, I don't want to use a different port. Clear this. Let's find the process that's using that port. All right, I think that's process 6704. Okay, we've killed that process. Wow. Okay, back to ng serve open. Sorry about that, folks. Let's try this again. Go. Okay, well, clearly we have a winner, even on a pre-built project. I have no idea why the process is terminating PowerShell on the Windows machine, yet leaving the port open. That's not fun to have to hunt for a process ID and then have to kill it. So not a very smooth experience on Windows. You know what, let's try instead of PowerShell, let's try command line. Now I'm still gonna go and find that process and kill it. Looks like 3420 is my process ID this time. And I'm gonna quit PowerShell here and use the command prompt instead. And now I'm gonna try to do the test again using a new application. So I'm gonna back out of here. ng new my app two. Sure, let's do that. Yes, I'd like to use routing and SAS. And let's do the same thing here. ng new my app two. Yes for routing, yes for SAS. And let's see if the M1 actually finishes this installation process first. No, it didn't, but I started it much later. Okay, let's go into my app2 directory and ng serve dash dash open, ng serve dash dash open. Okay, folks. Here we go. Hopefully the command prompt won't close on me this time on the Windows side, but at least we'll get a sense of how quickly this opens up on both machines. Let's go. Okay, it already seems like the M1 is much speedier and there's the browser open up with a running application inside a virtual machine on the M1 using Parallels and Ubuntu for ARM. Here the process again terminated the command prompt. It opened up the running application in the browser, but much, much later. All right, folks, this is not actually what I expected. I did sort of expect the Angular application to build and start faster running natively without any virtualization on the Windows machine with the Ryzen 7 chip, but I was proven wrong and even virtualized. The Angular build happens faster within a virtual machine inside Ubuntu running inside Parallels on an M1 Mac. I know you're all probably gonna have comments about this and maybe some thoughts as to why this happens. So definitely let me know down in the comments below. I hope to hear from you and I'm going to be doing some more testing with this Lenovo box. We're gonna be doing some JavaScript tests, Docker tests, and so on. So stay tuned if you wanna see those, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you found this video helpful or entertaining, give it a like. I'd appreciate it and other people might find this video helpful as well if you do that so it can be discovered. Okay, now I know what some of you might say. Alex, you ran that with Node 14 on one machine and Node 16 on the other machine. So what I did was I installed Node 16 on both machines.
settings. So here we go on Windows node dash dash version 16 and node dash dash version on Ubuntu 16. Let's try this test one more time. I'm gonna just run it real quick with the already pre-built application. Angie serve dash dash open. Okay, let's try this. All right, folks, <laughs> the M1 already started up the application and this one is cut up. So as you can see, it's still much slower, even with node versions being the same. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.